Um, my name is Rich McGinnis. I'm Deputy Director for Waterfront Planning from the Boston Redevelopment Authority. I'm joined with my colleague Chris Bush uh, from the City's Planning Department and our consulting team from UTL uh, uh, and Noble and Wimersham, uh, Matthew Littell, and Bennett Hart. Um, tonight we're going to present a, tac a text and map amendment to Boston Zoning Code Article 45 and Map uh, 1H. And this is uh, one of a series of meetings that we're hosting with the communities uh, along the uh, Rose uh, show, uh, Greenway to codify the Greenway uh, District Use and Development Guidelines. These are guidelines that the BRA Board adopted three years ago and have been kind of controlling developments along the edge, but we want to solidify them even more uh, by putting in new zoning. Um, we kicked off this process last March, I think many of you attended that. Um, we're doing a municipal harbor planning for the downtown part of the waterfront, uh, which will be an involved process. Um, in July, we hosted a meeting uh, to talk about our first steps for zoning. One was to do an overlay district. So if, when you look at the Greenway, it touches on numerous neighborhoods, all with their different urban context. It's very clear in the north end that heights are 55 feet. Um, and then you start looking at the financial district, Chinatown, uh, Bullfrench, and, and Government Center. So it wasn't a one-size-fits-all zoning approach. So what we did was an overlay district that kind of built in the general guidance of the Greenway guidelines, um, wind and shadow analysis, additional information for projects that go through Article 80, um, activation of the ground floor and the frontages of the buildings. Um, so those are kind of just general standards that are in the overlay district. And at the same meeting in, in July, we said that we would go back to each neighborhood district and do these surgical changes uh, to reflect the numeric standards that are in, in the guidelines. Uh, and that's what we're here to do today, is to talk about the Government Center Markets District, including One Congress or the Government Center Garage site. Um, so we're going to do an overview, again, a little bit of, of the Greenway District guidelines, just for context, uh, and then go through our recommendation for zoning changes. Um, the mayor asked the BRA to do a comprehensive planning process back in 2009. It was an 18-month process, um, and a document was finalized three years ago, and that's what we're looking to, to codify through the new zoning. Um, a couple of other things I wanted to point out, um, and these were based upon comments we've got in the past. The Greenway guidelines, when it was looking at the government center garage site, did analysis for the actual garage site, but also looked at city-owned parcels between Hawkins Street and Bowker Street. Those will not be included. That, the, the Hawkins Street, Bowker Street parcels are not included in any new uh, zoning changes. Uh, the BRA director, Peter Mead, and Kara Shen, the chief planner, has asked that we start working on a, a planning process to look at Hawkins Street, um, areas of the West End, Government Center, and Lower Beacon Hill, to look at where developments could occur and make sure that the community has, um, you know, say in, in what happens there. Uh, I think what we heard was that, you know, there, there are impacts from the Government Center garage site, and in particular the Hawkins Street side, that affect more than the Greenway. They affect other neighborhoods. So that's why we've pulled that out, and I just wanted to make that clear. Um, also this evening, we've asked uh, One Congress HYM development team to kind of update us on where they are. They've been having a series of meetings over the summer with the Air Impact Advisory Group, running their own analysis. And uh, we've asked that they present uh, for a little bit of context and how it relates to the new zoning uh, that we're presenting tonight. Um, I want to leave as much time for questions and answers, and uh, I'm going to introduce Matthew Battelle, uh, who's going to kick off the presentation, um, then Bennett Hart will talk a little bit about the zoning, and then I'll ask HYM, I think Doug Manns, to, to stand up and just talk a little bit about where they are at this point. All right? Thanks. All right. Thank you, Rich. Um, uh, as Rich mentioned, uh, I will talk a little bit about the planning context and the planning study that we did. Uh, I won't go into huge detail, but I will give a little bit of the context of how decisions were made uh, and to what to what extent. Um, ben will follow up specifically to discuss uh, the ways in which uh, these planning principles will be put into a, a zoning code. Um, 
the, the planning context, suffice it to say, is very rich. Um, uh, this area, particularly the Greenway study area, uh, is essentially overlaps many, many different studies over the last 10 to 15 years. Um, fairly rich environment. Uh, the purpose of our study uh, was to uh, figure out, now that this crucial piece of land is not covered by an elevated interstate highway, but instead covered by some of the best park spaces in the city, how should uh, the edges be controlled in terms of development to reflect this new condition so that the parks can be preserved and so that there is a kind of uh, mutually beneficial relationship between development and the valuable park space. Uh, this is more or less uh, uh, the kind of area that we considered in our study. Uh, the greenway here is about a mile long. Uh, we'll be looking today specifically at the, the market area to the north. Uh, but in the end, what we did was in terms of the guidelines, we divided this project. Um, what we realized is that there were several distinct zones, um, the north end, the Wharf district, Chinatown, etc., that had distinct characters and required uh, different kinds of controls. Um, so we're looking today again at some of those surgical kind of changes to the, the market district. Um, part of our methodology was to uh, look at this through several lenses. Uh, we looked at dimensional criteria uh, in the form of sort of urban design and building massing. We looked at the environmental impacts, uh, potential environmental impacts of those, those concepts. Uh, we focused in at a kind of ground floor level to understand the programmatic relationships between development, the parks, the public realm. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we kind of analyzed sub-districts to understand what their particular nuances were, what the development climate was there, and what their particular relationship to the park was. Uh, in the end, our methodology consisted of what we call a kind of four-legged stool, where um, multiple factors were considered. Uh, program and use, and by that we mean ground floor uses, uh, population, demographics, and the like. Um, economics, the, the impacts in the city, the tax base, uh, environmental conditions, shadow, wind, and uh, urban design and form, as I mentioned, uh, building size, shape, uh, and overall kind of massing character. Um, what we did was to take, uh, we identified a series of uh, either vacant or underutilized parcels, or parcels that had the potential for development in the next 10 to 15 years, and we uh, tested hypothetical scenarios, and then we applied these various um, criteria to them. Uh, we looked at the program, we looked at environmental impacts and the like, and try to back out what appropriate development scenarios would look like in each of these cases. Um, and so here's an image of uh, the, stud, the, the, the sites that we looked at. Some were, you can see these linear ones, we considered edge conditions that needed to be looked at. Some of them were just pure vacant sites. Um, many of them, one, two, three, four, are garages that are located. So there are different site types that we consider. Um, in the market district that we're looking at today, uh, you can see it was, it was these sites here. Some of them are, are uh, Greenway uh, CAT parcels, uh, including a garage and a piece of Fannel Hall Marketplace Center. Um, so uh, what you'll see here in these darker brown are these uh, test fit development scenarios. We looked at tall schemes. We tried to imagine the tallest we could possibly uh, justify in this location. We looked at shorter schemes. Uh, in many cases, we came out uh, somewhere in between. Um, but you can see uh, we, we analyzed this sort of holistically and also at the level of the individual neighborhoods. Um, we did extensive analysis in each district, uh, looking at some of the challenges. You can see some of the challenges here were some inactive edges, particularly along the garages. Um, uh, ramp parcels that form visual and physical obstructions for pedestrians, um, things of this nature. Uh, we looked at also the opportunities, obviously new connections back between Government Center and the North End, um, very favorable environmental conditions. This is a very sunny part of the Greenway. 
Um, lots of potential in this area for uh, to capitalize on some of the planning that has been done around creating a market district. And some of this activity um, is already in the works. Um, you can see some of the challenges we had, uh, particularly on the parcels that we'll be considering specifically in our uh, zoning proposal, um, really suffered from the fact that they were built mostly in response to uh, the presence of the elevated highway. So uh, the government center garage was a, a large building built, again, of its era, uh, uh, urban renewal and the like. Um, uh, Dock Square garage as well, uh, responding to that adjacency. And, and more dramatically, perhaps, the marketplace center building, which you can see follows the curve of the elevated highway and for the most part turned its back quite logically on what was then the condition. Um, these are conditions that now still exist, and part of the goal of the Greenway Guideline was to find ways to incentivize turning these backs uh, back into fronts that will activate and contribute to the, the public use of the Greenway. Um, we looked at some of these parcels in specific. These are, uh, this is the existing condition, and this is one scenario that we looked at uh, was what kind of massing can we uh, put on these sites? I won't go into too much detail, but suffice it to say that these are quite sensitive sites in terms of their proximity to very uh, sunny, nice parkland in the Greenway, uh, historical assets, market assets, Quincy Market, uh, views of Faneuil Hall, views from the uh, uh, government center, down to the water, etc. These are very sensitive sites, and so our massing proposals that we explored were, uh, as a result, quite uh, not very tall and uh, in these locations, and um, quite strategic in terms of their shaping. Uh, at the Government Center Garage, we found a different condition. Um, this is very far up on the Greenway. Um, we looked at a couple of scenarios for parcels on the Greenway only. Uh, this is imagining a partial kind of cutback of the garage uh, as a part of a phase scenario. We looked at a kind of lower version that uh, derives some of its height logics from uh, the adjacent Bullfinch Triangle neighborhood. Uh, we looked at possible taller volumes that might step back. Uh, and then we looked at uh, much larger schemes, which became sort of the basis for the guidelines themselves. Where could we put mass in here? Um, what we discovered in the course of our studies was that actually there was a fair amount of space here for some density. There's a lot of sites along the Greenway that cannot bear this kind of density, but we realized with a big site like this, with stepping back from the Greenway, that at least from a Greenway perspective, that a certain amount of density possible here. Uh, we looked to contextualize some of the heights in terms of reference, uh, both to International Place uh, and the JFK building, uh, but in general there was an idea of stepping down to the Greenway here. Um, <clears throat> we tested some views, again, from the Greenway. These are, these are conceptual views. This is the existing uh, garage. You can see cantilevering out over there. Uh, that sort of smaller phase one piece a slightly taller behind it phase two piece, um, and then that taller scheme uh, behind that as well. Um, so these studies resulted in our preliminary guidelines, uh, which came with both programmatic and uh, dimensional recommendations. Um, the first set of recommendations had to do with connectivity. Uh, so you'll see in blue, these are areas where we wanted to uh, emphasize the need to uh, keep connections open, to, uh, to capitalize on the fact that Greenway had reconnected the North End to Government Center, uh, Hanover Street, some of those major, major corridors, but also some of these Northwest connections through, uh, reconnecting perceptually at least the two halves of Congress Street once the, the elevator garage had come down. Uh, we looked at programmatic interventions, important locations, this particular corner here to enhance the Hanover Street connection, um, important nodes where uh, important activities like Quincy Market connect back to the Greenway. Uh, and finally, uh, some 
dimensional recommendations. Um, again, these were based on, uh, on these sites here, uh, relatively modest heights based on our analysis of uh, a lot of environmental sensitivity of those sites, um, historical, uh, contextual sensitivity in terms of proximity to Quincy Market and the like. So um, you'll see some lower dimensions here and some fairly sculpted, strategically shaped uh, buildings there as part of our excavation. Um, the Government Center Garage, uh, we found actually, again, room for uh, much higher levels of density there that uh, was not inappropriate. Um, uh, I want to emphasize, and I think Rich has made this point, that uh, the Government Center and Garage, because of its size uh, and the complexity of it, um, uh, there's some fine print here which says essentially that um, this, this site in particular requires more study. Um, we looked at it specifically through a greenway lens. This was our char. We wanted to understand the impacts of the greenway. We looked specifically at the shadow impacts on the greenway. But as a building of this size, abutting government center, uh, and within perceptual realm of west end, north end, etc., we can kill. Um, clearly, this is one site that would require a deeper level of study. Um, uh, Jay, uh, I'm sorry, Bennett, uh, Jay's partner Bennett, uh, will discuss a little bit of the zoning strategy uh, and how we uh, hope to implement some of these ideas in terms of zoning. This is forward back and pointer. Stop right up. Good evening. So this just shows the, um, I'm going to show a series of, uh, of, uh, of maps and then some, some text a little bit. This, this map, and let me know if you can't hear it, um, just shows the existing zoning in the, uh, along, along the Greenway. Um, and uh, we're going to be focusing in a few minutes on the, on the Article 45 of the Government Center Markets District, which is uh, up in this, uh, this area here. And now it's the, the same, same slide, but now overlaid with, with the various iPods, PDAs, and other overlays in the area. You can see the complexity of, of the zoning in the downtown. Now, one more overlay this is the, the, late, the latest overlay that was just passed uh, last month, the Greenway Overlay District. That is now, that's now a new law uh, as, as of last month. And uh, both Rich and Matthew spoke a little bit about that. Uh, I'll say a bit more about it in just a moment. Um, so that's the, this is the, uh, the, the legal context within which any zoning has to, has to come in. So, um, as Rich started to say, this is really part of, tonight is part of, is, is really a part two of, a, of a, what is a three-part process. It began with the overlay district that was passed into law last month. Uh, we are now talking to you about some surgical changes to happen in the government center markets district, and we, this is the second set of surgical changes last month will be presented to the, to the public um, and will actually be before the Zoning Commission tomorrow, uh, the, the town code changes for, for, uh, uh, to, for changes in one section or two parcels in the town code area. There's a whole other uh, section, uh, which we'll come back to that again, uh, that we're not talking about yet in the zoning context, and that's along the waterfront, this section here. Um, that area will await the, uh, the conclusion of the miscellaneous <coughs> process that is now underway. The zoning will be informed, the zoning and zoning changes will be informed by that, by that process. So now the overlay district, which is, which is uh, now in place, really deals only with um, uh, ground floor uses and the pedestrian realm uh, throughout the entire greenway. It doesn't change any of the dimensional requirements for, for buildings or, uh, or, or uses a second floor on up in the district. It's, it's really dealing with the, with the, the pedestrian experience um, and, and the way that the, the ground floor uses relate, relate to the area. That's what the early district does. And to the extent it, it conflicts with any of the underlying zoning, the stricter rules would apply. So for example, you, if you look at the, the zoning, you find that the shadow, the shadow rules in the overlay district uh, reference agreement specifically. Uh, and potentially could impose a stricter shadow requirement than, than would be imposed by the, uh, by the uh, underlying zoning. 
But tonight we're talking about certain changes to the to the uh, government center market district. That's our district. And I just would like to say that yeah, there's in the government center market district there's 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 zoning now in place. It's a it's a there's a there's rules about height, FAR, other dimensions rates, etc. We're not proposing to change any of those. I mean, we're not coming to you with, with specific changes that indicate height in a particular area of the of the district. We're proposing three new uh, planned development areas for for the district. Uh, and I'll talk about those in just, just a moment. So just, just there's no change being made to the underlying zoning. And in the areas we're talking about, if the development rules comes in and it's for less than an acre, it's not a complete development area, then the underlying zoning will continue to apply. So this is just a, actually a slide that Matthew had shown you about, and it really is focusing on, on, on well, two of two of the, uh, of the parcels we're talking about. We're talking about the marketplace property here and the dock square garage here and we'll talking about the Tupperware garage in just a moment. Those are the three new PDA areas uh, that we're proposing. Marketplace, dock square, government center garage. So there's an existing PDA in the district already uh, and that's up here. This is the site of the, uh, of the state court building, the Edward Brooks uh, court building. That's on the PDA site. Uh, and so that, that currently is its own is its own PDA. These are the three new ones we're proposing to add. This is, will become PDA two. That's the government center garage site. PDA three. That's the dock square garage site. And PDA four. That's the marketplace site. And just let me talk a bit about why we're, why we're choosing to do it this way. It really flows from what, what Matthew said about the planning process and the, the highly contextualized nature of the planning recommendations for these locations. If you look at the Green Bay Guidelines, what you would see is the recommendations call for different heights on different parts of these parcels, which would make it a difficult thing to try and zone for that. If we were to try and impose underlying zoning, that, that call for it, heights on different heights of different parts of the lot. That'd be a challenging undertaking. One, I don't think it would actually work out work out very well. Uh, the, the thinking was that, that to to have PDAs where the heights and massing could be established in the in the PDA process through the BRA and the Zoning Commission, informed by the guidelines, would be the best way to do it. And so what we're proposing, and I'll show you this in a minute, proposing that, that, that it say that, that that's where the heights and the mass would be established, um, but that it be put it so it'd be approved in the, in, the, in the PDAs, but that those decisions be guided by the guidelines. So there are really three substantive changes we're proposing to Article 45, and I'm going to show you all, all three here. The first is in section 45.9. And this deals with the purpose of, of the PDAs. What, what is the purpose of allowing PDAs in the uh, district? And I'm showing you here in blue the new language we're proposing. So the first new language would be to specifically call out the government center garage site as an appropriate location for large scale redevelopment. And that's the same language that's used, you'll notice, for the existing PDA, which is the area bounded by Richard and Cambridge, Stanford, and Merrimack. So we're simply adding another uh, item to, to, uh, to, to describe the area of the, of the Dunham Center garage site. And then secondly, we're, we're, we're adding another purpose, which is, which is to, to encourage development to activate the Greenway as an appropriate purpose of, of the PDAs along the Greenway. Second change that's substantive and, 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 and noteworthy for tonight's meeting is what I said a moment ago about the way the process will work. And so with regard to PDAs two, three, and four, not one, PDA one we're leaving alone. PDA one is the existing PDA where the state court building is. 
that, that PD has its own height and FAR requirements. We're not touching that. But we're saying with regard to PDAs 2, 3, and 4, the proposed new ones, that, that the dimension requirements, height, FAR, massing, will be established through the approval of a, of a development plan through the VRA and the Zoning Commission, which shall be, which shall be guided by the Greenway District Planning Study Use and Development Guidelines as determined by the VRA. So that's what we're proposing as, as the standard by, by which the development plan will be, will be adopted. Third and finally, in, in uh, plan development areas in the city of Boston, uh, Jen, what you'll find when you see PDAs set forth in the, in the zoning uh, section is there's a section on public benefits. And the, the, current, uh, the current Article 45 has a set of public benefits. And if you read it, you'll see that a development has to satisfy at least one. There are other things that, of course, have to happen as the development is, is brought forward through the uh, large budget review process. Uh, other, other benefits will surely be, uh, will, will be delivered. But there are in the PDA some, some specific ones, one of which has to be met. So we thought it made sense, again, because of the Greenway uh, locations, that, that the improvements to the Greenway be, uh, be one of those public benefits criteria. So we're recommending, um, proposing adding that to Article 45 as well. And that's, uh, that's it for my presentation. So I'll stop now, and I'll really turn to Rich. Um. That's a lot of zoning you just heard. Um, so just to clarify maybe a little bit more. Um, so PDAs, planned development areas, they're like hyperzone. When we use them, it has been mentioned, we have large tracts of land, so an acre or more parcel, or you would have a huge campus that's under one ownership. And there's no way you could write zoning to accommodate a, a level of build-out. Zoning typically has a requirement of, oh, you have to have so much open space in a development. Well, PDA tells you not only how much open space you have to provide, it's where it's located specifically. If you have to provide public roadways, it's just not a general, you have to provide uh, roadways. The PDA tells uh, the developer where the roadways are located. And the same with the, the massing of the height. You just can't have a general you know, it's 200 feet for the entire parcel. We may want to have the 200 feet in a certain area. So that's that's what's great about PDAs. It also adds another layer of process and community input. So while this zoning would allow um, PDAs to be eligible on these three additional parcels, there's still a development plan and a public review process under Article 80 that the development would have to go through. I believe the One Congress Street project is doing that right now. It, it needs approval of our board, the BRA board. Then we have to go back to the Zoning Commission once again because it's approved as zoning and it can't be modified without going back to the Zoning Commission. So it, it's just like another layer. I can call it hyper zoning, um, if you will. Um, the, this presentation and the proposed text amendments um, will be on our website, the BRA's website, under planning initiatives. Um, it's under the Greenway guidelines um, component. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, we wanted to give the uh, HYM uh, development team a chance to just uh, do a brief overview of where they are at this point. Um, and then we'll open up for our questions and answers. And uh, Doug Vance is here to, to do that for us. Uh, good evening. My name is Doug Vance. I'm director of development with the HYM investment group. And hopefully you can all hear me, so I'll try to speak loud as you can. Uh, first, I want to thank the BRA, Richard Gettys, and the staff uh, for inviting us. Um, you guys have saw a lot of information, so I'll try to keep mine kind of short and sweet. But So we're the uh, developers of uh, the, um, the Government Center Garage. Uh, many of you may already be familiar with this project. We've been in the public process now uh, since early June, and this project has been kicking around for much longer than that as well. Um, but we've been asked specifically to show how our proposed redevelopment project is consistent with Greenway guidelines and what the BRA has been uh, working on as well, kind of a parallel track um, you know, for this site. So I'm going to definitely just really focus on the Government Center Garage site. Um, so specifically, 
in the market district of the Greenway guidelines. Press the buttons here. Talking about this area here, which is the government center garage site, and the market district of the Greenway actually extends much further, but really focusing on this area here. One other thing to note, um, a previous developer to us was working on this project had also incorporated their proposal, the Hawkins Street parcels as well as the police station. They're not part of our project. So we're just focused on the Garrett Center for our site itself, and that's what we're going to go through. Um, so that's what our focus is. Um, we submitted a project notification form of this proposed redevelopment back in June of this year. Uh, we've had uh, many meetings with uh, Impact Advisory Group that was formed for this project. We've also met with many community groups, including the West End Civic uh, Group, Deacon Hill Civic. We've also had a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings, too. So we've been in this process for a period of time. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the project. There are many people here that are not familiar with the project. Um, but basically, it's the phase redevelopment of the Government Center Garage. Um, and one of the primary goals is really to get to the point of demolishing the garage from Congress Street over to the East Parcel, uh, which would really open up and you know, break down what is currently the garage is 1.3 million square feet. It's 2,300 spaces. It's basically a mega project. It's an urban renewal project that was built back in the late 1960s. Um, really kind of an auto-centric type garage. And our goal is basically over time redevelop it so we get it into more two urban scale blocks. But go through the phasing really quickly and give you a quick overview of the project. This is the garage today. It sits on a 4.8 acre site today. It's a very large site in the city of Boston. This is um, one of the two North End Greenway parcels here. This is the I-93 ramp parcels here. Kind of as many of you may know, goes under and turns the Merrimack Street here. This is the uh, Sudbury Street and New Charlotte Street. So uh, 2,300 parking spaces and 250,000 square feet of office space is what it is today. It's about 11 stories <coughs> and about 137 feet in height currently. The uh, proposed project goes in phases that we would first build um, an apartment building here, approximately 450 units, which would be the first phase of the project. This is more of a recent change uh, from our original proposal, but then we would demolish the garage from basically from this side of Connor Street over to the east parcel and basically cuts the garage in half. We would then proceed to also build an office building here, approximately, originally it was 600 feet more lower than that now, I'll go through that in a second. But the Greenway guidelines do allow heights up to 400 to 600 feet in this area. And then we follow up with a mixed use development on the east parcel, and then we fill it in. So it's kind of a six phase project. It takes over 15 to 20 years. Uh, it is a long term project. Um, but part of this was really developed and designed in conjunction with understanding what the Greenway guidelines were looking for. But again, that's a pretty quick overview. I want to at least kind of relate. This is kind of a quick image of what it looks like. Um, when it's complete um, at the end of the 15 to 20 year period. Um, so much more of a mixed use project, um, lower density and scale on the east parcel, and then higher density and scale on the west parcel. So turning back to more related to the Greenway, so we went through the Greenway guidelines and there was, I'm gonna, this presentation is divided into two parts. First is kind of five major overall Greenway goals or market district goals, which are more related to the ground plane or you know, creation of activity. And the second part of the presentation will go into specific design guidelines. So the Greenway not only you know, put forth some major goals, they also set you know, design guidelines for each of the parcels as they went through this project. So and we kind of picked up five that we thought were very important ones, particularly for the market district or our site. First was to increase the residential opportunities. Second was to support the nearby market district. Again, you guys may have already seen a lot of this already as the period went through their presentation. Specifically for the Government Center Garage, they talked heavily about creating distinct identities for the east and west parcels. So again, really about breaking the garage up and creating two new um, parcels that have their own identities. And the last two are really key ones too, to activate the ground plan with retail uses and then uh, this concept of maintaining priority frontage all the way along the greenway, so which we looked at extending up through the project. We'll kind of go through that. Um, the first is increased residential opportunities. The previous version of this project um, by the uh, developer before us was almost a commercial-centric project. It was all commercial office space, with very little residential space. Half of our project um, is residential. We're going to be adding 881 new residential units onto the two parcels. And another key item, too, is 50% of those units are actually constructed in the first phase of the project. 
So again, I'm really trying to add some uh, vitality into this area, which right now is really kind of a nine to five district of Boston, unless there's a Bruins or a Celtics team, which is about 80 event nights a year. So the idea was to add some uh, residential. We also are providing on-site affordable housing. 13% uh, is required by Boston inclusionary housing regulations. Um, but that's one. Second was support the nearby market district. When we go to demolish the garage, we are looking at really connecting what is, we're at the end of Canal Street. So here's the east parcel, this is the west parcel. This is Kyme Street, which gets opened up. It's a very important connecting corridor from Canal Street back to the Greenway, as well as back to the market district. And the low-rise buildings and mid-rise buildings on this parcel uh, are really staged, there's three of them, to really create a new uh, public plaza that then connects both to the Greenway parcel as well as the Market District. And we also looked at basically making all the ground floor uses um, a lot of retail. And the idea was to really help connect, particularly the parcel 7 garage and Market that's going in, but to really connect the Canal Street District back into the Market District. And we see this as an extension of it. Um, and we think it's a very important component. So we are looking at clearly trying to support the Market District as we do this redevelopment. The third is kind of creating distinct east and west parcel identities. The Greenway uh, guidelines do call out uh, for the east parcel to have heights and densities that more relate to the Bullfish Triangle, so, um, which is more than 150 foot or lower height range here. And then it steps down over as we get towards the Blackstone block. And the Greenway guidelines also call for the more density you're really on the west parcel. So again, this kind of shows you a quick massing of our project very important connection point that goes from Canal Street and then out to the Greenway Parks as well as Congress Street. So again, we were really trying to match up our, you know, our massing to the Greenway guidelines themselves specifically. This gives you a sense now, again, the daylight in Congress Street we think is a very important concept for the project and for the Greenway, but this is the current view looking back at section of Parcel 7 garage behind you. This is the current, so you're basically looking at Merrimack looking back towards Congress Street. This is the before, and this is the after. And again, an interesting thing, some of the view corridors looking back to the custom house are opened up, which have not been opened up since the late 1960s. But again, trying to connect back different parts of the city through this redevelopment. Um, activate the ground plane with retail uses. I talked a little bit about this, but again, in this diagram, this shows you the ground floor level of our proposed redevelopment. Again, this is Congress Street when it's reopened up. Uh, the pink, which is a little bit hard to see, is retail uses. Um, the yellow or orange are really um, residential and hotel lobbies. And then this is actually office lobbies. But again, the idea of having continuous uh, ground floor retail wherever possible, particularly on the east parcel. But we also have it too. Currently, the garage has very little retail. There is the Dunkin' Donuts here, there's a little food basket here. This has been retail that's vacant for a long time. But the idea is that we also wrap all of the west parcel with ground floor retail uses as well. Um, but really important from our perspective to, you know, per the Greenway guidelines to activate the ground plane. The uses that we've looked at actually are really um, related to the uses that the Greenway district has listed uh, for themselves. So they've listed about 50 or 60 retail uses that we'd be looking at as potentially for a fit for this area. Maintain priority frontage. So uh, this shows the concept of area went through but, you know, obviously, really concerned about what happens on these parks and activating it. Now, we do have a unique condition on our site. We have the Haymarket bus station, uh, which is right here. The idea, though, is that we still think the priority uh, frontage is very important. But we talk with our parcel about a subtle shift, which is really the priority frontage ends up inside that new public plaza that comes through our site and it connects out back to the Greenway parcels. This is still a ramp parcel here, which obviously is a but an, an impediment to uh, the end of the Greenway and our parcel itself too. But yeah, here's the priority front, we actually go right through. We have retail on both sides and a lot of connection up to Canal Street. This is actually showing a view through the current bus station, a market bus station, looking back um, in the uh, parcel seven drives back here. So this is the current view. It shows you the view of inside the plaza when it was redone. So these are the two cycles, kind of an end uh, retail building, the anchor building. But yeah, here's a this would flow from Canal Street and pass back out through both sides to 
either the Greenway or to back to Connor Street and Market District. So, and then Greenway design guidelines specifically, go through this. This was the original massing that we had proposed um, with our project notification form uh, back in June. Again, through the series of all the community meetings that we've had and also with elected officials, the DRA staff, we've actually made a number of modifications. We're going to kind of walk through them. Um, and uh, as I go through that, relate them back to the dimensional criteria of Greenway District itself. But when we started the project back in June, we did have a 600 foot tall office tower here, um, a 275 foot tall hotel condominium over here on the East Parcel. And these are the other heights of the other buildings that we had proposed at the time. In total, about just a little bit over 2.4 million square feet of new uses. And then after we go into the community process, we made a number of key changes. And the first is dropping the office tower from 600 feet by 72 feet down to 528 feet. Now the Greenway guidelines allow all four buildings between 400 and 600 feet uh, on this parcel. Again, because of the community crust that we've gone through, we've heard a lot of concerns from the community that 600 feet from their perspective is a little too high. And so we have cut this down to 528 feet. Uh, we've also heard a number of comments on the front hotel condominium building, which was approximately 275 feet. We've cut this down to 157 feet. This is more in keeping with Greenway guidelines too. Greenway guidelines saw this as really, this east parcel as a transition for the Bullfish Triangle and a stepping down over to um, the Blackstone Block in parcel seven. Um, so now we're approximately 157 feet uh, on this building. Um, both of those also, and I'll show you in a second, reduce our shadow impacts as well um, on the Greenway parcels. Uh, we did make a few minor modifications and increase the height of some of the other buildings about 10 feet on this first residential building, a couple floors on this building, and part of this was to offset the loss of the square footage as we dropped these two buildings, and a little bit on this front building as well. But overall, our project, we've cut out 122,000 square feet of office space uh, from it, so our project overall has reduced as well, besides the height coming down. So this is kind of our revised project. This project we did submit um, uh, through a draft project impact report which we submitted to the BRA about approximately three weeks ago. We are currently in a comment period on that DPIR. Uh, it lasts for 75 days. We will be going back to the IAG and some of the community groups to go through the proposed changes that we have done here. Um, and um, we'll continue to work with the community. Um, and one of the next steps that, if this process goes forward, we would also like to send a PDA development plan for the project, which would also have its own separate comment period in addition to our DPIR as well. So again, this is kind of a quick view of the building, buildings. So shadow improvement. We pulled a couple of shadow diagrams to kind of show, pick two particular times. Um, our DPIR has um, a very dense section of shadows. Um, the VRA actually asked us to look at shadows for every month of the year by hour. So I want to show you a couple here. The DPIR is actually on our website. It's also on the, the, the VRA's website as well. So you can get a lot of information about shadows. But these are just to show a comparison that we drop the office tower from 600 to 528 feet. We drop the hotel condo from 275 down to 157. This was the original shadow line out to here on the Greenway Parks. And now this is the new shadow back here. So basically the yellow area is a reduction in shadow from our changes just from the PMF to the DIR. So again, we're trying to cut down that shadow reduction. Again, there were some concerns besides the actual height of the building. Some people were concerned about the shadows hitting the you know, Greenway. Most of our shadow impacts are more in the late day and in the summer months. Um, and then we also did show on December 21st how the shadows reduce uh, with the change of the heights as well. So they're quite dramatic. Um, as actually we get into the winter months, there are longer shadows. Um, back for a second. So last two slides I'll just leave with. One of the other design guidelines, and I already kind of talked about this, but one of the key design guidelines was about reinforcing connections, again, from the market district back to Canal Street, but it was also about reinforcing the connections from New Sudbury Street back to the North End, as well as New Chardon Street, but again, this is still a bit challenging with all the ramps, but as part of our project, when we tear down the garage, we'll be reconstructing, you know, this portion of Merrimack slash Conger Street into more of a boulevard setting, but we'll also be fully reconstructing New Sudbury Street all the way along the project. And that means for us new sidewalks, street trees, bike lanes. And the idea is to really enhance 
the cross connection as well, which is very important to the Greenwood guidelines. So this just is the ground plane to you again. Um, I'm going to pause because there's a lot of information. That's it for my presentation. I'm happy to answer questions. So text. All right. Um, so the entire Greenway Development Guideline uh, document, we intend to have that codified by the end of this year. Uh, this is just one section for the government center area. We hope to go to the Zoning Commission in October to get approval to put it uh, in place. The uh, presentations you saw this evening and the draft text and map amendment uh, will be on our website tomorrow uh, for public review. Uh, so I'm just happy to open it up for a comment from uh, all of you now, and uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, turn this meeting around so we can get out shortly. Jane? Uh, just a quick question. The PDA comment period starts and ends when? Uh, I know. Uh, John Fitzgerald, Senior Project Manager with the Boston Redevelopment Authority. Uh, it will begin the day they file it. Uh, right now, they, we have to make the land PD eligible first. Uh, they will file very shortly thereafter the PEA. Uh, but it's a 45 day comment period. But the way it works, because their building is so big and has a 75 day comment period. For the DPIR. For the DPIR. So what about the PEA on top of that? It will actually fall within the 75 days because the project is so big. So it actually turns out that the, the PEA comment period will end before the 75 day comment period. So we're just having everything be uh, November 6th. Is the end of the uh, it's the end of the DPIR comment period. Tense, keep it an easy November 6th for everything. Okay, thank you. Sir. I'm on the IAP for the government center garage. I just had the map to understand this volume. No, no background with the developer. But now, as I understand it, the BRA and the zoning commission have to get together to develop the rules of this PDA. I won't see them for some time. How can I, how am I supposed to comment on what, the, on what the developer has proposed, whether it meets these new guidelines, which I have not seen? That'll be through the development plan review. Right now, we're asking the, the zoning commission to allow PDAs in general without any numeric guide, other than what's in the Greenway guidelines, which heights of up to 400 to 600 feet. That's all the context. The development plan, <coughs> would be the one that would set the specific, specific numeric standards in the zoning, in the new zoning. So your opportunity to review it will be when the draft PDA is submitted, which I believe would be the beginning of November, once the PDAs are allowed. Uh, that's well, what, that's true, but the present time, as a my PDA member, I have to give my comments within, I think, 55 days now on this specific proposal. And I don't have what, I don't have what the rules are yet. You're telling me there's going to be new rules, and I don't won't know what they are from at least another month. Right. Well, the rules will be what the Boston committee process, and ultimately what the BRA board votes on. Right. But you're asking the IAG members of the, right now to comment to on the development plan without telling us what the ground rules are. How can we compare this? And see what and decide whether it particularly for meets the new impacts. requirements. I mean, I think you look at what's in the guidelines, the Greenway guidelines, which are officially won't be applied to this for another at least another month, right? Well, the green line, the guidelines have been in place since 2010. Okay. They don't. They're not changing. They haven't changed the zone at all. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So I am supposed to compare the developer's plan to the present zoning. To the present zoning and what's in the Greenway guidelines. Which are not legal. Which are well, not legal. They're redundant by the BRA and what we're applying, um, what projects go to I don't think lead. you're giving us an impossible task to, to compare a plan, a specific plan, when we won't know what the new rules will be for another month. Right. Just it makes it quite unfair and almost impossible task. It's actually two things. The way the way it works is, you know, you don't look at it. There's the zoning, and then there's the project. And I understand what you're saying. Maybe the project, we don't know how it fits into the zoning yet. So how can we comment on it? But it, it's you have to look at kind of as two separate processes. The the proposal itself that's in the DPIR, don't you know whether it conforms to the zoning or rules, etc. 
take it on just the merit of the impacts that it will cause, not how it fits into the zone. What we want to know is, does this building, how will it impact you in terms of traffic, environment, wind, shadow, etc. That's the comments we're looking for. And we know that we, we don't have the zoning yet to compare to what the rules are. But I think what we're looking for is through the Article 80 process, what are the impacts of this building as proposed? And then the zoning is a separate process that you can comment on. Do you mean to say traffic also? I'm sorry? Do you intend to say traffic also? The, the Article 80 reviews all, all impacts that, that a project has. Yeah. And, uh, and I also just want to correct, um, Rich just said earlier that they'd be filing sometime in early November. It's actually, they, they, for, the, for the plan development area that they plan on filing, they actually probably plan on filing that sometime in the month of September. And just as soon as that land becomes eligible to be PDA, and when it's PDA eligible, they can then file a PDA plan. That more sets the uh, My name is Bob O'Brien, <coughs> excuse me, I'm Downtown Walk Association, also a member of the IAG. I would just like to uh, make note of something that Doug said about how the project has been changed from the project notification form to the EPIR, especially as it relates to Greenland. Clearly, the reduction in the height of those two buildings has beneficial effects in terms of shadow stains. But I would suggest that equally, perhaps even more important, is the fact that the phasing of this project has been changed so that the second phase of the project, rather than as originally proposed, the last phase of the project, will remove the portion of the government center garage that spans Congress Street, Merrimack Street, all the way over to the Greenway. That building looms over the Greenway now, and it also includes, on the east parcel, the Haymarket bus station. So the improvement for the Greenway, in, in addition to opening up the light to the Greenway, is the acceleration of the redevelopment of the East Parcel and the improvement of the Haymarket bus station, both of which have very significant and now much more immediate impacts on the Greenway. And I think in terms of how Government Center Garage relates to the Greenway, that really needs to be emphasized. Another good thing about the PDA is the phasing that we could put in the, the taking down of the garage early on. You can't do that in general zoning, but in a development plan, we have the, the way to, to control that so that the garage will come down sooner than what was originally anticipated. Other questions? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if the city has thought at all about the possibility of trying to address parcel six. Um, given that we realize that's entirely separate, it's under the control of the state, but the city will probably make the biggest difference in seeing that something happens. With all of this development in the future, and so much money going into it, this seems to be the time to try to develop parcel six, and it's going to take some ingenuity and initiative and trying to bring it in when something else much larger is going We've had discussions with MassDOT about them kind of working with us on this process with design guidelines for the ramp parcels. Um, so we're in those discussions. And, um, yeah, I don't know what the next steps are, but we've had a communication with them and they've offered to assist with funding that, that planning analysis in coordination with ours. Quite some time ago, like in a matter of a couple of years, the Can state had. Oh, sorry. sorry. That Quite some time ago, um, a couple of years ago, the state promised to make any planning for the ramp parcels um, public. So there'd be some sort of public process. Are you aware of anything that's going to be public? Yeah, I'm not aware of anything. Comments? Victor? Yes, one more. Victor Brown here from North End Waterfront Residents Association. Uh, I have Three questions, I guess, but one of them just came up today. Uh, earlier, uh, I heard that you were going to the zoning commission tomorrow, and then I heard that uh, the, uh, they would be going to the zoning commission uh, first of November and then September. Are those two different things, and if so, can you explain? No, we're going to the zoning commission for this text amendment in October. We're going to the zoning commission tomorrow for 
a zoning change for the town cove area or the yeah so there, like i said there are numerous zoning exercises we need to do um, so we'll be pretty busy with the zoning commission oh, but for this this change is the october so this text isn't etched in stone yet yeah okay uh, on that subject uh, i'm looking at what you had online in connection with this with this hearing and the very first sentence puzzles me a bit. Uh, under overview, the mixed use market, the mixed use market district government center subdistrict is well established and serves as the key foundation of the successful North End parks. Uh, it seems to me that insofar as there is reference to the market district, the market district has not yet well established. Uh, the only market is the HPA. And, uh, and serves as the key foundation of the successful North End parks. I think there may be some citizens of the North End who say that the success of the North End parks has been due to the use by the North End residents and has nothing to do with the market district. Can you explain? What's that some of the guidelines? Yes, that's the opening sentence of the opening paragraph under overview of the guidelines. I think that may have been for urban context. Which to me location. makes no sense. I don't think that I don't think that was based on use. I think that was more for the build out context. Well, it's called overview, yeah, insofar as this is not set in stone. I suggest that maybe somebody can another look at that. Sure. Uh, The next thing is under Government Center Garage, which we've been talking about, uh, uh, which is potential development sites. There is the phrase, heights up to 600 feet without adversely affecting the Greenway Parks environmentally. And we've seen that the height has come down to 528 feet. But what I wasn't able to see is whether, uh, to what extent, the shadow on parcel 8 is affected by the lowering the height. That went on rather quickly. Can you comment? I think that'll be in, in the filings, the project filings. They run the, the shadow analysis. And I haven't looked at it. I was at it. Look look at it. it. When the next community meeting is for uh, <coughs> uh, our community meeting for the government center garage is <coughs> we're going to have it October 1st. And uh, that is uh, here in the Pimonti. So it'll be October 1st here. Yeah. And the shadow analysis? At 6 o'clock. In, in the, sh yeah, the shadow analysis, again, you'll find it both on the BRA website as well as our website for Redevelopment Government Center Garage. And the BRA has asked us to do basically hour by hour shadows for every single month. And so whatever part, whether it's parcel 8, parcel 6, the north end parks, I mean, you're basically going to see shadows for every hour all the way around. And then we also do have a series of comparisons between the PNF and DPIR. But if you just want to look at shadows any time of the month, go right to those documents. I guess the question would be how is the BRA going to apply, define and apply adversely affecting the Greenway Parks environmental thing? No shadows ever or some shadows when? Uh, in other words, you've made the statement. Uh, right. How are you going to apply this? Well, this, uh, I, 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 we look at shoulder seasons. Uh, so we look at months of October, the end of October, um, where people are still enjoying extended periods of time outdoors, and that would be affected by a shadow. December, that's not the case. So it's it, it's really we're looking at the time of year and what those impacts are. So instead of environmentally, it would be without adversely affecting the Greenway Park's use. I would say the ability for the public to enjoy it, which is used. Which is used. So perhaps that should be looked at again, in as much as this is not set in stone. I think that's all I <coughs> Well, I think, no, only one other thing. Um, and that is, by the way, I had to blow this up because I could read it, what was online, it was so tiny. Um, under the Hanover Street crossroad, which is an extended uh, extension of Hanover Street yeah, yeah. down into the North End. Um, 
I think the North End community uh, would favor leaving the open <coughs> plaza in front of it. Uh, well, at Salem Street and Hanover Street, an open plaza rather than having it developed, you probably heard that before. That opinion hasn't changed. Um, I think you'll be hearing it again as this goes forward. Questions, comments? Sorry. Uh, <coughs> extra stone uh, comments uh, prompted me to ask uh, the whole block adjacent to this site that goes from Stanford Street to Cambridge Street to Congress Street, you said is a separate PDA or whatever the term is. Uh, what is it that uh, this state? Has a right to do or might do. You mean with the, the courthouses? Yeah, originally when that was you know, the story, they ran out of money because they were etching the stone in there. Uh, it was supposed to have a big tower so tower in the center of the dome. Uh, and at various times there have been all sorts of proposals. Right. Uh, well, well, I'd say at least half of that area is now filled in by the courthouse. It's just the center area that the current zoning I think allows up to 400 feet with an FAR, I think maybe of eight. Um, it's still owned by the state, which is exempt from, from zoning overall, so we're going to the developer for us to have um, you know, our zoning apply to it. Uh, but I think that's what we'd like to look at in our next kind of iteration of planning for the West End Government Center, Beacon Hill area. Is Hawkins Street and the other area the community thinks might be um, a possible development site. Another question over there. Okay. Uh, my name is Kathleen Ryan. I live in the West End at Buffalo Place. Um, what effort has the RMA in conjunction with the BTD to look at all of the development projects in our neighborhoods that are? proposed and or upcoming in terms of impacts other than shadows. So for example, traffic. Uh, you've got the two proposed towers at uh, Boston Gordon. I think there's a meeting on that tomorrow night. I think on Sunday there's another meeting. But in any event, I heard you mention master planning as a next stage sort of thing for the West End, Beacon Hill, and North End. But is it now the time to have all the developers, the DTD, the ERA, everybody talking to everybody about the traffic and congestion, especially with Longville and Bridge being redone? Uh, I think there needs to be some staging, some timing, some consideration that when you put up these towers and you supposedly hopefully fill them with people, how are they going to get to where they're going? That retail arcade that uh, to go on the East Parcel, it'd be really nice to be able to get there. I can because I can walk, but I think there are some real issues in terms of infrastructure with regard to all this development. I'd like to know what the BRA is going to do to urge all the developers, the ETD, everybody to get together. Well, when, when we do this master planning process, all city departments will be involved, including ETD. But right now, any project that goes through Article 80, um, we reach out to city departments, including BTD. BTD, BTD is the one that approves curb cuts, uh, access to new parking garages. They work with us on the parking ratio. Um, if there is a retail component of a development, how many spaces do we dedicate to that? Um, for construction management, they look at, well, how many other construction projects are going to be occurring at the same time and what if it would get to close down a sidewalk, um, if there's a bridge out. All those things are currently being coordinated through the BRA and the Transportation Department through Article 80 review and through their um, transportation access plans that the um, Transportation Department approves. And master plans sort of way rather than spot plans by spot by spot or project by project by project? Well, the master plan will allow us to be able to do that, but right now, the Transportation Department knows what's approved. They know what, what intersections are in failure or what, what's working well. They're able to study that entire area 
uh, based upon what they know now. I think today all the review already is cumulative. In other words, all of the projects, this project is uh, accounting for the transportation impacts, already accounts for all the projects that we know that are, are in the pipeline. So in effect, all of the projects are confirming each other's impact and the ability for us to actually make sure that the mitigations that are being provided by all the projects can make sure that all the intersections are being relieved to the maximum degree possible. So in other words, it's not done individually because they're all plugging into the same context. Okay. I just had two hours I mean, you, you, I, think, I think the, the, the question is, a, I'm not suggesting that, I, I'm only, I just want to make sure that it dispels the notion that these pro projects are seen as individual and reviewed without the benefit of the context of all the other development proposals and things in the plan. If you look at the impact report, there are the no-build scenarios, the build scenarios, and the build scenarios actually show all the other projects that have been proposed or underway and so on. So I would urge you to look at those sections and then to review the traffic results. As a, uh, as, so when then tomorrow you said that you're going to go to, that there's a public meeting on the North Station Towers, and they would be required to have all of the, um, the capacity that is presumed that will be approved here as part of their study. And, and we in the city make sure that that's being consistently applied to all of the projects that are under the field. Yeah. Uh, Mary and Ken are also offering uh, place. Uh, what's being said all sounds very reasonable, but uh, we know that the various projects in South Boston went through the same review process we have to assume that they also had capable consultants. And yet, we read in the Boston Globe that the traffic now is what was projected to exist in 2020. And basically, it's a situation that nobody wants to live with. And I read the preliminary filing on the government central garage, and it showed in uh, the uh, consultant's data that there are multiple intersections all around it where the traffic conditions are already unacceptable. So it is very hard for us to envision how so much more development can take place and have people able to move at all. I have friends in the suburbs who are no longer willing to drive in to have dinner in my home and a good cook. But they <laughs> find it too difficult to do it. And that's the condition that we are living with before you add all of this. So uh, we think it needs a lot more careful consideration and possibly a lot more downsizing if the neighborhood is to function at all. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, from I mean, from isn't there any response to that? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, just is not, I know, I you're not controlling the discussion. We're, we're trying to reach the community. I want to, we want to make sure that there's an opportunity for people to raise that issue. So if you want to answer, I, I, my name is Karen Shen. I'm the chief city planner. I was um, a staff member responsible for doing a lot of the planning and review for South Boston. It, the transportation studies, in fact, show that there would be uh, a time when if everybody continued to drive to South Boston, that there would not be, uh, there would be more delays if you were relying on cars. So what we're seeing in South Boston is that we are, we didn't expect as many square foot feet to have been built in the last few years that we project. And to that, I think we were pleased that the development has taken up a pace better than we expected. We also didn't expect major employers like Vertex and so on, who by the way, <coughs> are beginning to move into town. They, as a matter of policy, actually subsidize and provide free parking for their employees. And so many of the employees still simply expect that as they move to South Boston, that they'll continue to drive. You also note that 
there are still many surface parking lots that are providing parking that are supplying downtown parking that in our projections we're going to eventually go away and not provide, not be a satellite parking location for the downtown. Now, in addition to that, we have some people who have been driving to the waterfront who were there earlier, like the John Hancock employees, the Fidelity employees, um, that have a pattern of driving, like all of us do when we go on neighborhood streets, and we're, what we're seeing is that they're adjusting to these changes. And so the mayor has brought together the Port Authority, the, tra uh, the Mass uh, Department of Transportation, the city uh, in the various wings, um, to really talk about helping to people, to get people to understand that there are different ways of getting in and out of uh, the waterfront. So that's as it pertains <coughs> to South Boston. You should also know that in our projections, we have been withholding, or actually we have money from the developers with held back to continue to, to fund studies for the city to, to, to figure out new ways of actually mitigating these kinds of traffic problems. So that's as it pertains to South Austin. I think your point is well taken about the fact that um, if we don't, if these projects simply just added more traffic and added more trips and added more parking, then clearly some of the intersections that are not working well in this area will get worse. So I think part of the exercise in the, the review of these projects is to make sure that we have your input as people who use these streets on a daily basis to help the technicians in City Hall who see numbers <coughs> and see models understand where the special, let's say, pressure points are so that we can pay special attention to those intersections that are going to be critical that if they fail, subsequent failures in other places will have, uh, let's say, more greater impact on the quality of life. So I think we need that kind of input. But I think that fundamentally, we are looking at the number of trips and how much these developments are relying on parking and people driving. And you know as a matter of, of our general policy now is that we're trying to reduce the reliance on private vehicles and maximize the ability for people to walk and use transit. Now, that doesn't necessarily help the friends from the suburbs necessarily because many of them still will rely on on using the cars. But I think that there will be a period where I think people will have to make the adjustment that you know when and which routes to take to, to minimize the time that you will be you know, spending in your car. So I don't think that there's a way around that particular thing, but I, uh, this, this, you know, you have the changing of behavior. But I think that you, I, I want to assure you that we're trying to apply a consistent technical review standard to all the projects. And they are taking into account, as I said earlier on, that this project impact report is using the same build-out numbers for, let's say, the North Station project and the rest of the Wolfings Triangle projects that have been projected and uh, to be built and to be approved. So I think you, you know, I, I don't want you to take my word for it, but that's the, 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 the protocol and uh, methodology that we use. Sorry. I, I, I have comments. I appreciate your, your comments. Um, I, I think that the, uh, uh, the problem of traffic exists today. Tonight we're talking about three additional uh, large proposals which are taking place along the Greenway corridor. Um, Town Cove, you mentioned two additional uh, projects, all designed to increase the density of uh, population within the area. With that density comes additional traffic. Um, uh, this does not take into account the uh, aquarium garage and the large uh, um, uh, proposals there, nor does it include what's going on in South Boston and what you've already approved in terms of increases in building and, and uh, density across the bridges there. Um, uh, would it be impossible, or would it be appropriate perhaps to have BTE come to these meetings uh, and talk to us? Because I'm unaware of any meetings where BTE is present, um, but this would be a great forum for <coughs> to come um, and talk to individuals about mitigation, what they see, where the problems are. 
right now, if you stand on um, on the, the Greenway, uh, especially towards the middle wharf district itself, um, it, from four to seven o'clock at night, there's grid line, and there are frequently emergency vehicles stuck in the grid line um, with cars blocking intersections. There's no place for them to go. Um, th this is not just the inconvenience of getting to and from your, your home or business, this is life breaking. Um, so, you know, I really think that this needs to be part and parcel of everything that's being discussed here. Yes. Down, the garage needs to be torn down. 
we need to make us the city look just like San Francisco looks about the world class cities. It is. As far as the traffic concerns, the city's all over 400 years old. Pretty much any other city's built on a grid. Transportation's easier, traffic's easier. Unfortunately for Boston, we don't have that luxury. The traffic, the congestion here has always been the way it has been. As far as construction of this project, we survived a big dig, we survived other big projects. We'll survive this one too. I think it's the best thing for the city right now. To make this area look good. But I didn't want to put my daughter. Everyone have a good night. <laughs> I'm Jane Parcel. I live in the West End at West End Place and also on the IAG here. Um, one of the things that, to elaborate a little bit more, one of the things that's happening with the Government Center Garage Project is some of the garage spaces are going away because they're not needed. Uh, what we have found in our neighborhood of both in Triangle Developments is that the, we, we are permitting, for, let's say, 0.5 parking spaces per residential unit. And some of the developers have found they can't fill their garage So yes, there's a lot of traffic around the city. I think right now we're seeing more partially because of the Long Bell Bridge project. I know I live right at the corner of Stanford, Lomasney, Causeway, that whole part of the intersection. And it's terrible in the morning and in the afternoon. It's horrendous. Um, school buses are on top of that too, that stop in front of my building. But I think that when we realize that people do have cars, they do drive, but not everybody does, especially the new people coming in. They're leaving their cars out, or they're parking those people out of the city for when they need them. And many companies now are encouraging their people to use public transportation. They subsidize their T passes, um, or they are members of Zipcard or something of that nature, so that you don't have to have a vehicle. I haven't had one for about seven years, and I get it along just fine. Um, took me a while to get used to that idea, but I finally picked the bullet and did it. And I think that with all the traffic that's going on, in our neighborhood, and we have a lot of it, it will ease up some. I think not only will these projects make it a bit easier on, on the streets because there will be fewer cars, but once Longfellow Bridge is over with and you, we get some of the other bridge construction done, I think we'll find that things will be much easier. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments? Yeah. I'm Martha McNamara, a member of the IAG and representing the Hills Association. I have a question about the PDA process. Yes. Um, so I think I heard this right, but I just wanted confirmation that what we're talking about now is mostly analyzing from the Greenway perspective. But will the PDA process include analysis of height and density impact from the Beacon Hill Cambridge Street perspective? Yes, it'll fall under the general Article 80 review process which doesn't look at just impacts in one sector, it looks at all nearby open space and public realm. Um, so that's Article 80, but the PDA process, will that also take into account from the Beacon Hill and Cambridge? Right, so the PDA process and the Article 80 are pretty much one and the same. Oh, wow. uh, it's, it's just the PDA memorializes the development plan, what's gone through the public process. Um, so the safeguards, mitigation, uh, location of massing based upon how the public commented and, and the things were modified. I mean, the project is modified even more as it continues through the process. That gets recorded, uh, recorded in the new zone. Yeah. Um, I'm Mary Lawn. I just have to um, agree with the comments about the real difficulty of density of getting in right and down and gap as that all feeds into there. And I do have concerns. And it's not just for individual cars, but if you're in buses, and I even heard the guy that runs the trolley tours, he said he just, he just can't get around anymore. And I think the idea that everybody doesn't have um, access to the public transportation, not that they're taking buses along there, I just don't think the problem's going to go away. And I'm concerned about that. It's a concern for us as well. I mean, the shuttles that run from South Station and North Station, they have to run. They have to be on That's right. Otherwise, people are going to look at alternative ways to get across the city. For the for the comments? Questions? Yeah, I have one. Sir. I'm Jerry. I live in South Boston. I've uh, worked there 48 years my whole life. I mean, I understand that no disrespect to you people here, but uh, you, 
know, I live in South Boston, I pay twenty-five hundred dollars a month for three bedroom apartment that doesn't have to pay the panel and everything else, okay? I can't find the park spot in my neighborhood for forty five minutes, maybe two hours a night. There's so many cars in that neighborhood. I can't go to the beach in my old neighborhood because everybody from everywhere else is coming into that neighborhood to go to the beach. Everybody from this downtown area that works here cuts through L Street doing 90 miles an hour. There's been many accidents and stuff. But I choose to live there. All right? I choose to live in that neighborhood. I pay the $2,500 to only take home $800 a week to pay $2,500 a week. I need the money too, just like this gentleman says. I need the money to go to these works. We understand when no one's trying to disrespect anybody, but you choose to live here. You know what I mean? There's a part of that south that, that, that um, behind the fleet center there, there's one building left down there. I wonder why no one's saying anything about that. I'm sure I know why, but I mean, there's one building down there that a certain person owns, and no one's complaining about that, you know what I mean? But uh, I live in South Washington, I choose to live in South Washington. The traffic comes through here every day. I can't find a parking spot at night, which I understand, you know? I choose that. When people choose to live here, the development is going on. Things get new, they don't stay old. Things get new, you know, development is development, you know? So, I mean, I just, you just gotta look at a lot of point of views here, just not be, and we have a monument over there in South Boston, Dodge is the Heights. That's been casting a shadow on the neighborhood for the oil condition. Why don't we take that down too? You know? And then by the old monument next, take that down, that casting a shadow also. But uh, that's no real disrespect. I'm just trying to say that there's other life going on besides this neighborhood. Thanks. All right. Let me wrap it up. Again, uh, the text amendment uh, language is on our website. Thank you.